Requesting a trade in the AFL is a decision that carries a lot of weight. It's one based on a multitude of factors, the size of a contract, the likelihood of achieving team success, being close to family, or even something as simple as playing time. In this video, we're going to take a look back on some occasions in the AFL where a player has requested a trade only to miss out on playing in a premiership with his original team. I made this video in 2021 and decided to remake it on a different format with some new examples. If you want to see some more AFL content like this, make sure you hit subscribe to this channel. One of the most famous examples of this topic is that of Nathan Buckley. Buckley was originally drafted to the Brisbane Bears, playing 20 games there and winning the Rising Star Award. Desperate to get to a Melbourne club, he had made a deal with the Bears that would see him traded to the Melbourne club of his choice after one season. Believing they had the best chance of winning premierships, he chose the Collingwood Football Club as his destination, and thus, there is a cruel irony to the rest of this story. Not only did Buckley fail to win a premiership in his entire career at Collingwood, he would play in two losing grand finals against his former side, and watch them go on to complete a historic three-peat during that period. Unfortunately, his fortunes didn't really improve his coach either. Buckley coached Collingwood to within one straight kick of an AFL Premiership in 2018, before stepping down as coach in the middle of 2021. His full-time replacement, Craig McRae, would then take the Pies to ultimate glory in just his second year at the helm. While we're discussing some of the bigger names in the game, let's talk about Gary Ablett. Both of them, actually. Now, unlike Buckley, Gary Ablett Jr. managed to achieve the ultimate success twice with the Geelong Football Club and play a huge role in a team that was absolutely stacked with talent. At the conclusion of 2010, Ablett announced that he would be making the move north to the AFL's new expansion side, the Gold Coast Suns. Many believe this would signal the end of Geelong's premiership window, as coach Bomber Thompson also stood down as coach. Instead, the Cats would win a third premiership in 2011 in new coach Chris Scott's first season in charge. Ablett would return to the Cats in 2019 for the twilight years of his career, and his final game would be in a losing grand final to Richmond in 2020. He was denied the fairy tale ending, and then had to watch his former side go on to win the flag in 2022 without his help once again. Given Ablett's decorated career and two Premiership Cups, it's fair to suggest he wouldn't have lost too much sleep over this though. Gary Ablett Sr. is also a worthy mention in this discussion. This story isn't technically a trade, but it's an interesting one nonetheless. Ablett Sr. started his VFL-AFL career at Hawthorne, a fact that gets easily lost amongst the backdrop of his incredible career. After playing just the six games, however, Ablett continued his career at Geelong and played a further 242 games, etching himself as one of the game's greatest ever players. At the end of 1987, Ablett actually shocked the footballing world by agreeing to a five-year contract with Hawthorne after four seasons with the Cats. This worked a little differently back then, however, and he was able to change his mind and stay with Geelong on a five-year deal with them. Ablett Senior may go down as the greatest ever player to not have played in a premiership, but this may have gone differently had he defected to Hawthorne, who won three premierships over the span of the rest of his career, including a grand final win over Ablett and Geelong in 1989. One of the highest profile players on this list is Buddy Franklin. After spending eight years at the Hawks establishing himself as a modern day great, winning four All-Australians and playing in two premierships, Franklin famously switched clubs at the end of the 2013 season. After much speculation that Buddy was destined to join GWS that offseason, the Giants stunned the footballing world by announcing a week before the trade period that they had withdrawn their offer for Franklin. The reason? They were of the belief he was about to sign a monster deal with the Sydney Swans. And so he did, and his first season with the Swans was almost perfect. Buddy won the common medal, Sydney finished on top of the ladder and went into the grand final favourites against Franklin's old side, the Hawthorne Footy Club. The buddyless Hawks were far too good on the day, however, smashing the Swans by 63 points to win their second premiership on the trot. Unfortunately, Franklin would fail to play in another premiership in his career at Sydney, playing in two other losing grand finals in 2016 and 2022. He would have to watch from afar as Hawthorne would win a second premiership without him in 2015. Hey guys, just a quick note to let you know that this video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. You know, since I got back to the UK, I've been thinking a lot about mental health. Personally, I had a lot on my mind and it's got me thinking a lot about how this specific lifestyle that I choose, where I'm very dedicated to making content, etc., right now, the unfortunate byproduct of that is that it's made me feel very socially isolated. And that can be difficult when you have a lot on your mind. And, you know, some people might be able to relate to that. And for others, they might not feel socially isolated as such. They might be surrounded by loved ones, they might be surrounded by friends, but, you know, sometimes people just don't want to feel like a burden if they want to talk to people about the way they're feeling. I think there is a lot to be said for being able to verbalize the way 
way that you're feeling. Sometimes it's not even just about problem solving the issues that you have in your life. Sometimes it's just about getting that negative energy that you have inside of you out of you. This is where therapy in general, but better help specifically can come in and add a lot of value to your life. It's basically a platform that matches you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. If you want to check out more info, check out the link in the description of this video and the pinned comment or go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. You'll fill out a questionnaire to assess your specific needs. Then they'll match you with a therapist with years of experience at helping people just like you. And usually you will get matched with a therapist within 48 hours. And then scheduling your sessions is really easy. And you can do it by a phone call. You can do it by a video chat, whatever is the most convenient for you. It is literally the most convenient way to seek therapy. Let BetterHelp connect you with a therapist who can help you today. And if you use my link, like I said, betterhelp.com forward slash true footy, you will enjoy a special discount on your first month as well. Thanks guys. Let's get back to the video. Now let's talk about Brett Deledio. Deledio was the number one pick in the draft in 2004 to the Richmond Football Club and went on to play 243 games for them as one of the better players in a bad era for the Tigers. When Damien Hardwick took over as coach, we saw the Tigers begin to improve having found a core nucleus of elite players that took them to finals in 2013, 14 and 15. 2016 was a bad season however, and Delidio began to explore the possibility of joining another club, admitting to Hardwick at the time that he wanted to win a flag and, to paraphrase, play at a club in which he was confident of their direction. Hardwick, who was under immense pressure at the time and unsure of his own job security, gave Delidio his support and more or less encouraged him to explore his options. Delidio met with DeLong and the Western Bulldogs before ultimately signing with the GWS Giants. Now what would immediately ensue is quite cruel. By the very next season, Richmond had begun to emerge as one of the greatest teams of the modern era, winning three of the next four premierships seemingly out of nowhere. Delidio would just play 32 games for the Giants and played in a losing prelim final in 2017 to all of his former teammates. Given Delidio had been there throughout the dark days of Richmond, this strikes me as perhaps the most unfortunate on this list. Ryan Griffin was another player who left his own club, the Western Bulldogs, to join GWS. Griffin's story is not dissimilar to Delidio's and he was taken just two selections after him in the very same draft. However, their motivations to leave their original clubs were distinctly different. After 202 games with the Dogs, Griffin made the decision to leave after a period of unhappiness and the desire for a clean break from his environment. The Giants were the eventual suitor for him, and he joined them in a deal which involved Tom Boyd heading the other way to join the Bulldogs. Now as it would happen, in Griffin's second season at GWS, the Dogs would pull off one of the most incredible premiership victories the game has ever seen. Now there are two caveats to this story. Firstly. Tom Boyd played an integral role in the Dogs getting over the Swans in that grand final with a stunning three goal performance and the ceiling goal. So it's unclear how that would have played out if the deal had never happened. Secondly, Griffin has subsequently admitted that he may have retired pretty imminently had he not left the Bulldogs. Nonetheless, I think Ryan Griffin is a worthy admission to this list. Sean Higgins also qualifies as an example on the same criteria. Higgins left the Bulldogs in the same off season as Griffin having played 129 games for the Dogs, joining the North Melbourne Footy Club. Higgins would play 108 further games with the Roos, and like Griffin, would have to watch on as his former teammates would lift the 2016 Premiership Cup. Higgins would finish his career at Geelong, and while he was on the list when the Cats won the 2022 Premiership, he retired without ever becoming a Premiership player. Now let's move to a more contemporary example of this scenario, Geelong's Ollie Henry. Henry was drafted at pick 17 by Collingwood in the 2020 draft, playing 25 games there and kicking 28 goals. At the end of the 2022 season, Henry requested a trade to join his brother Jack at the Geelong Footy Club, who had just happened to win the Premiership that season. So Henry joined the Cats and enjoyed a pretty damn good first season, kicking 41 goals in a breakout year. On the team success front, however, Henry was shit out of luck as the Cats plummeted to miss finals after an injury affected season. Henry had to watch on as his former side went on to claim both the minor Premiership and the Premiership in his first season out of their club. There is an irony to the fact that Henry's two clubs are both the last two AFL Premiers, and Henry was on the opposite list both times. You could make a case that West Coast Tim Kelly belongs on this list, although this example is a little murkier. Kelly was drafted by the Cats in 2017 as a 24 year old, and was an instant success. He made the All Australian team in his second season at Geelong, and formed a key part of a very strong midfield. Due to personal circumstances surrounding his young family, Kelly was adamant that he needed to get home to a Perth club in order to be close to family and his support network. So Kelly joined the Eagles at the end of 2019, and has subsequently watched his former side play in two grand finals and win one premiership, 
while his current side are the current reigning wooden spooners. From what we know about this situation, Kelly really needed to get back to Perth, and so his regrets may not be as strong as some other examples on this list. The other reason this example is murky is because the Cats used part of what they got for Tim Kelly in order to obtain Jeremy Cameron from GWS, who formed a key part of the eventual flag winning side. Regardless, I still feel that Tim Kelly qualifies for this list. Now let's shuffle back a decade or two to 2003 to discuss Nick Stevens and his exit from Port Adelaide. Stevens played 127 games with the power across six seasons before requesting a trade to his native Melbourne to play for Collingwood. But a deal could not be brokered between the two clubs, and Stevens decided to quit the club and enter the pre-season draft where he could be drafted by anybody. As it turned out, that club was Carlton, and Stevens would play 104 further games there. Unfortunately for Stevens, the power would go on to win the Premiership in his very first year at the Blues, while Stevens would form part of two Carlton Wooden Spoon sides over the next handful of seasons, and retire without a Premiership. Jared Malloy is another player of the past who makes this list with a particularly unfortunate story. Malloy played in 110 games combined for both Fitzroy and the Brisbane Lions before being traded to Collingwood ahead of the 2001 season. The timing of this wasn't great, as Brisbane would win all of the next three premierships, two of which were against the Pies, while Malloy played in one of the losing grand finals. This three-peat would span the entire period of Malloy's career at Collingwood, as he would retire at the end of 2003 at the age of 28 due to troublesome ankles. Before we wrap up this video, I thought I would point out two contemporary examples of players who may technically qualify for this list, but you could also argue that they don't. Brodie Grundy and Adam Trelaw are two players who technically left Collingwood not long before their Premiership in 2023, and subsequently missed out. However, both players were more or less pushed out as the Pies looked to go in another direction. Trelaw got pretty close to a flag in 2021 with the Bulldogs, while who knows what Grundy can achieve this year with the Sydney Swans. But there you have it, a list of players whose trade requests ultimately cost them a premiership. I'm sure there are more that I didn't include in this list, so if you can think of some, please comment down below your suggestions, and perhaps I'll include them in a future video. For now, thanks for watching, thanks for being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.